This is once again the instructor's compass under the Academia Gonzaga and this is Mentor Noy now tackling the topic Natural Selection Theory. Before we will continue, let us first qualify our discussion this moment. Natural Selection Theory is one of the phalange of theories that Charles Darwin, the father of evolutionary studies, originated and proposed in his book, The Origin of the Species. Natural selection has something to do with survival, competition, adaptation, and regeneration. Again, these are survival, competition, adaptation, and regeneration. Natural selection has something to do with living organisms and their adaptive ability to the environment or to other pressures that exist in the area of existence. The sooner that such an organism will be able to adapt okay, to such an environmental change or pressure in the surroundings, the greater the possibility that they will be able to continue existence and eventually reproduce to pass on the hereditary capabilities to the offspring. Thus, in the assumption or in a truthful assumption, many living organisms who cannot adapt to environmental changes and societal pressure eventually end up being extinct and their race will surely become dormant in the next few seasons. This is the working assumption of natural selection as a theory. Natural selection is not about the might of our organism, rather the capability to adjust or to adapt. A very good example here is the presence of the dinosaurs. Well, who can forget about this great beast? Some of them flying, some of them nocturnes, some of them swimming, and some of them king and queens of the lands. Dinosaurs they are. If we will take these beasts or beasts by their size, well, we can really say that they can overpower almost all living creatures in this world, and there is no doubt to that. However, as we have mentioned earlier, natural selection believes in the capability of adapting and not the capacity to impose power. Those are two different things. Even if an organism is powerful but it has low adaptation capabilities, it will still be eradicated. We mentioned earlier that survival, competition, adaptation, and regeneration is always present in natural selection. This is the very reason why in the change of environment and societal pressure, dinosaurs competed for food up to the extent of killing and eliminating each other. The environmental change became a great pressure to these great animals, and this became their issue for survival, which eventually wiped them out of this universe. Natural selection is in itself a very bad or a very broad topic. It has something to do with the cross heredity wherein a possible diversion from a present hereditary status will eventually give birth to another breed of animals or another living organisms. So this is actually peculiar because even if two animals belong to one breed, after their mating, other genes may come into play, they produce something different, it's already considered another breed in terms of the Nash natural selection theory. So, this is the very reason that capability of cross heredity propelled the diversified components of society. And it is the belief of natural selection as a theory that diversity was caused by natural production of hereditary inculcations, hereditary faults, hereditary cross-sectioning, and hereditary mix-ups. That's why, according to Natural selection theorists, today we are diversified because of natural reasons, because of natural cross-heredity situations. Dear learners, we need to know the facts of the theory even if we in the world, the Christians, or people who honors a superior being, knew 
that reproduction and diversified contention of living organisms cannot just happen by means of natural selection. But it is our belief that a supreme being aided in the organized creation of this world, well, we call that um, supreme being as God in our own religion being Christians. Thus, even if sin has, tr has tormented and destroyed the environmental perfection, we can still see traces of fair distribution of life, organized placement of life, and even completeness of the living harmony between lives. Such a tendency will not just occur because there was a random natural selection that eventually resulted to this organized society, organized environment that we have now. It is still our personal contention that for a world or universe to be situated the way it was already existing now, a powerful entity that has no beginning and no end, an alpha and an omega in itself, a god who is in heaven, created such a wonderful system, and that explains the perfection, coordination, and harmonious relation of life in our universal existence. If it is not too obvious, dear learners, we can always realize that God is not in the equation of the natural selection theorists. And this alone will give us reasons to study more this theory so that we can prove if our Christian faith is wrong or right depending on the realities that we will meet, the logic that will surface in our eyes, and the philosophy that will be instilled in our hearts. There is nothing wrong in studying natural selection. However, there needs to be a sincere connection with God to help us understand the true occurrences of our environment today. This is the Academia Gonzaga, and we are now tackling philosophy of biology with the specific topic, natural selection theory. Once again, this is Mentor Noy, and hope to see you again in our continuous learning in the online domain. Have a wonderful time, everyone.